Hey everyone, my name is Ksenia and today my guest here is the captain, Sean Dean. How you guys doing? How's it going? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. Recently, like in various interviews, I've been kind of skipping the generic questions. That's perfect. Like, <laughs> like, have you been wrestling for and stuff like that? Because like, questions you get asked all the time. Yeah. Googleable. <laughs> like, you can Google that. <laughs> yeah. So let's just like jump right into it. Cool. So what I want to talk about first is that you have been like one of the first discoveries and like signees that came from AW Dark. That's great. And AW Dark has been like a platform for discovering new talent pretty mm -hmm. much within AW. And you have witnessed it like pretty much from the start. Yes. How do you feel it's changed since then? Um, it's changed a lot. You're saying the first five people to go like when Dark was like myself, Lee Johnson, Alan Angels, yeah. uh, Cody Vance and Anna Jay uh, when the pandemic first started last year. But since then it's been at first it was just a last minute thing like we needed they needed to keep the show going and and we just so happen to be in like in the right place at the right time. But now it's just been like a, a really good platform just to get that discovery of some of these indie talents that to be honest at any other time wouldn't have got a chance, you know? So I always tell people that like the pandemic was like a, it was a gift and a curse at the same time with all the tragedies that happened from it. But through those tragedies came a lot of triumph. So uh, especially in the wrestling business. So a lot of people who names weren't out there at the time, they were able to get, um, get out there and get some exposure and whether we picked them up or not, or whether we kept bringing them back, they were able to thrive and, and, and get some more opportunities at other independent companies that, again, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to get to. So it's it's really opened up the door a lot to some of the talents who aren't saying. Yeah, and also you mentioned the pandemic, obviously, mm -hmm. and like the bigger part of your AW run has been throughout the pandemic. Right. And do you feel like, in a weird way, the pandemic like gave you the opportunity that you wouldn't have. Oh, uh, one hundred percent. I feel like you know I, I'm confident in my abilities to to perform and, and and be an asset. But I think that the pandemic definitely gave me like a fast pass, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> uh, to get get the opportunities. But I, I've always felt like I would be put in a position to to shine and, and show uh, that I contribute to AEW or whatever company at the time before AEW came about. But I just felt like I would would be somewhere, um, and I'm glad it's with AEW, but the pandemic definitely gave me the fast track. It, it put me out there in, in, a, in a spot to where, I mean, I, I probably wasn't as ready as I could have been, but I was ready for the opportunity, and, and I feel like I each time I've been out there, I kind of showed uh, a little bit more progression, and, and it ultimately led to me getting a job, so, yeah. yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, as of right now, you also do like quite some work for AW on the other side of the curtain. That's correct. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, outside of just being uh, a wrestler at AEW, I also do um, some behind the scenes work with helping out with the extra, so a position that I was in before. Um, so I'm like an extra coordinator, so I help uh, book some of the extras for Dark. Um, I help do some other things behind the scenes, whether it's uh, helping out with production and things like that. But the main focus is um, bringing in the extras for Dark to, to compete or to whatever type of other needs we need them for backstage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're like pretty much at the helm of it. <laughs> uh, EW Dark, like finding new talent. Yeah. Which, which is great. Yeah, so, just, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a, a lot of those guys, I, I, uh, some of them, they, they email me, but most of the time, sometimes I just sit at home when I'm not on the road and I, I really just scroll through Instagram, I scroll through Twitter and I just try to see like what's different, like what's yeah. what's new and really just trying to bring some people in who possibly can make an impact or just give somebody, you know, some big names on the indies uh, to come in and give them some more some more shine to and exposure to so that they can uh, compete against some of the best people in the world. And that is why social media is very important for very us. Important. <laughs> Take notes because Mr. Shondin might be scrolling on Instagram <laughs> at one point. And might just, be looking for you. You never know. You yeah. never know. So yeah. So can we talk about you a little more? Sure. <laughs> you are an actual real life US Navy veteran. That's correct. And that's a part of your gimmick too. That's correct. Uh, to what extent do you feel like you really incorporate like your actual real life background into your gimmick? Um, I, so at first, uh, when I first started, I, I was had like a football gimmick because I play uh, professional football as well. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've always been like the captain. So the captain thing was something that is in conjunction with the Navy because on, in, in the Navy when you're on, a, on an aircraft carrier or any type of ship, 
the Navy is kind of like the highest ranking officer that's mm -hmm. on on a ship. He really takes care of the crew. Uh, he makes all the decisions and things like that. But uh, for me, it was just a captain. So I took that and I adopted it into my lifestyle. It's just been me my whole entire life. So I've been a captain um, in sports. I've been a captain like uh, I'm in a fraternity, uh, Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. Um, I was a captain with that. Uh, and it's just, it's just kind of translated into everything that I do. So a captain is a leader. A captain is a person that's selfless. I'm always willing to help. So that's something that I was able to do. Yeah. and incorporate to my game. And being like an actual military veteran, does it almost feel that you like have to include it in the gimmick and like in the way that you present yourself? So yeah, that yeah. people can find you. Know? I, th I think so, I think so. Being a military veteran is something that we relate to and in America is just something that just helps us look at uh, a symbol of like freedom or a sim symbol of, of bravery, symbol of courage. So, And one of our core values in the Navy is honor, courage, and commitment. So for me, I, I really hold that really near and dear to my heart because, yeah, I mean, it, it takes those three things to really get through in, in, in life. You know, you, you want to be an honorable person. You want to have the courage to step up and help others or, or just be that brave in it individual and you want to have a commitment commitment to be committed to whatever you set out to do you know so i try to definitely incorporate that in everything i do from how i post on social media to how i talk to people just being you know a, a beacon of positivity it's, it's so much negativity <laughs> in the world you know so really don't like wasting my time on negative stuff i always try to be positive even when somebody's not feeling down if i see somebody i just try to uplift them so and that's kind of what i do when i get me too you know as you're talking about like positivity and like not liking the negative things in life, mm -hmm. I'm like sitting here with a weird face because we are going to talk about some quite negative stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, here comes the negative. The negative. All right. <laughs> uh, wrestling and the military has been a thing Correct. for a while because like we have tribute to the troops, mm -hmm. we have like the honorary like, guests and stuff like that. Do you feel like in the way that it is presented right now, it's performative or not? <laughs> um. So what do you mean? You mean like, does it does it help or? Yeah, is it like something that you think promotions can do like genuinely and in a way that would actually benefit the veterans, or is it just for the pretty picture? And how do you uh, avoid it only being for the pretty yeah. picture? So I'm, I'm glad you said that. So that's that's really that's something that I definitely do want to bring and help change because I do yeah. I can see what you're saying <laughs> with that where like it's like a sometimes people do things and it's for like publicity or they do it yeah. just because just to do it because it's they seems like the right thing or it's it's Veterans Day or it's Memorial Day or it's whatever the case may be recently we did something on Memorial Day that was really it was something that I helped uh, set up with the K-9 for Warriors thing and for me that was just something that I felt passionate about that I wanted to do you know I could we could have did it with anybody but I felt like with that the K-9 for Warriors thing was giving K-9s to veterans who suffer from PTSD brain trauma all these type of things and that's something that's a real thing like you know when I was in the Navy we did we watched tribute for the troops you know we had wrestling on top of our air care carriers and things like that and it was fun but then after it was over it's kind of like it was over with you know yeah. but for for me i want to keep that going keep that partnership going so that it's like a year-round thing so that you know mm -hmm. it's not just when we have these tragedies or we have like these holidays that come up where we want to pay homage or tribute to these guys mm -hmm. i want it to be a year-round thing because that moment at double or nothing when we had the k9 for words and that was really special you know because that that young man who was up there on the stage, he was somebody who suffered from PTSD and that was like something that was so great for him, you know. And I still try to keep in contact with those guys and I try to promote and plug in whenever I can because that's something that we need, you know. Uh, it's, it's cool to go out and wrestle in front of them given that moment at the same time, but once we wrap up and things like that, we want to make sure that we keep going with that, so yeah. That's something I definitely want to be a part of. Being the AEW is getting more veteran, yeah. Right. Getting, getting more veteran stuff involved and, and being more than just giving them an event, you know. I, you know, I'm going to talk about feminism because I do talk about feminism quite a lot on my mm -hmm. channel in wrestling, but also like in other things. And since we're talking military, we're going to talk military. Uh, so like statistically, it is dangerous for a woman to enroll in the military because mm -hmm. like there are a lot of cases of sexual assault and other kinds of discrimination. Is it really inherent to the institution? Because it, at times it feels like it is. And like, is there a way to make it safer or should we even and like What's going on with that? Uh, Have you maybe like experienced or like seen something like that while you were in the Navy? I, I, I haven't personally seen it uh, in my time in the Navy and I've heard stories and, and of course I've, I've probably had heard stories from some of my shipmates and, and things like that and, and they've gotten uh, the help that they needed with it when it happened. Yeah. But for the most part, what I've seen and I mean time changed and, and I, I haven't been in the military in, in 
over 10 years. But even when I'm in now and some of the friends I keep up with now, like a lot of them are in a position of power now. So that's something that I really, really like to see, you know, because in the military, you know, you, you did have a lot of male uh, superior officers and things like that. But now the tide is kind of shifting where mm -hmm. there are more women in power. So you have more women chiefs, senior chiefs, master chiefs, or uh, that are captains, officers, you know, so you, you're getting more people, more women who are in a position to, as you just said, change the narrative as far as like um, how things happen. So for now, and you have more women who are joining the military now, you know, back um, earlier in like the 80s, 90s and things like that. Yes, you know, women weren't as encouraged to join the military and you know and even before that you know it was, it was seen as a more male dominant thing you know women can't go to war type thing like that but now um i think it is changing it's changing for the better you know and some of our women sailors are are more more brave than some of our male sailors you know and uh, for me I, i've always felt like you know when i was on a ship i didn't care who it was if it was a male woman you know uh, i didn't care who was if i was if my life was in danger and i was falling off the boat or under attack or anything like that that i just wanted to make sure i look up at my shipmate and that's how i looked at everybody so i've always called everybody never looked at them as a male yeah. female or anything like that that was my shipmate so if they if i can trust them with my life then that's all i cared about so yeah so it's, it's good to see that um, that women are becoming more empowered and getting more roles to where they can affect the change that they want to see. Yeah, because like to me, what really ties it to wrestling, like that problem in particular, is the whole like boys club mentality. Correct. And I do like, I, I am like <coughs> tiptoeing around the topic of like tribute to the troops because like we all know what happened there. So mm -hmm. like, that also happened. Uh, but also like we've even seen like quotes for, from like the veterans of the industry pretty much exposing w with no shame that this boys club mentality existed probably still exists and they like think that it's right and miss it but also like from the outside perspective at least it feels like aw is really overcoming that right and you being someone who plays a part in recruiting talent can you like maybe you know <laughs> tell us like what is the change that we need to see in the industry? Like what kind of talent does it take for the what kind of talent or what kind of manager or what kind of a boss it takes yeah. <laughs> to not have this toxic environment in the locker room? Um, and I'm I'm not saying this just because he's my boss, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think that the industry needs more Tony Khan's. Agreed. Tony. <laughs> I'm Tony Tony Khan is like the the blueprint of change in wrestling. You know, he is doing things that years ago would be frowned upon in wrestling, yes. but now it's being accepted. You know, so when you have a, a, a diverse roster as as we have, I mean, it's just the proof is in the pudding. And then you have a diverse roster that we have, and then they're going out and performing at the same levels that our counterparts are are performing at. And it just shows itself that all those stereotypes, all those type of boy club mentalities, all the cliques and things like that, it really doesn't matter, you know. As long as you're going out there performing and, and, and doing the job that you're being asked, it doesn't matter what you're into or what your sexuality or what your sex, race, whatever it is, as long as you're going out there performing and entertaining for the fans, at the end of the day, that's really what all that matters, you know. Yeah, and throughout your career, you've performed for quite some promotions. I know that you've done Evolve as well. Mm -hmm. And like, can you give us like, one word or maybe like two words like how aw is you know different at its core from other promotions or is it <laughs> um i just i think it's it's definitely it's just the diversity the diversity of our locker room is just it's different from from everywhere else and, and plus we have a we have a family mentality. If that's one word I can say with AEW, it's, it's it's a true family. Like it. there, it really is nobody here who can't talk to somebody. You know, no matter how big of a name you are. You know, we have names like, you know, Big Show, Mark Henry, Sting, and then you have like myself. I'm, I'm at the at the bottom, and you know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I am. I'm I'm just at the you know I'm, I I haven't made any waves like that yet in the industry yet. You know, I'm just getting still getting my feet wet, but. You know, to know that I can go and talk to like a Mark Henry or I can go talk to a Big Show and just sit down and have a genuine conversation with them. And it's no, you know, them shooing me away or acting like they're big time. You know, that's, that means a lot to, you know, because when I was coming up, I, I did meet 
some people in, in my journeys who were, uh, you know, at, at the pinnacle of their careers mm -hmm. at one point in their life. And, then, you know, I see them backstage and they don't want to talk to me, you know. So it's like, you know, like, you know, it was, was kind of crazy at first. But now it's like to, to have that here at AEW where you don't have to deal with that, where you can just, you know, for a lack of better words, be yourself and, mm -hmm. and pay homage to these legends who you get to meet and they give you the information that they've got throughout their whole entire careers. It's really good, you know, to get that information from them and not have to worry about feeling like you can't talk to them, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And let's like wrap up with like a fun question. Sure. Uh, throughout your time in AEW, if there's something that like AW or like just being here, or like people around you taught you, like th your favorite like life lesson that you've learned <laughs> around that time. I don't know, life lesson is like a big word, but yeah, like yeah. maybe you know, like a little thing. One of the things that I learned from people is like Jerry Jerry Lynn is like he's just always telling me to just go out there and have fun, you know. And it's something as simple as that, you know. It's it's so simple, <laughs> but it, it seems like you know it's a simple phrase, but. It really helps because when you when you feel it, especially with fans coming back now, you know, we spent the whole a whole year where we wrestling just in front of each other, you know, and maybe a few fans here and there. But, you know, that that first time when like Double or Nothing came back and we had the full capacity crowd and, mm -hmm. and he would talk to people, and he just would say, hey, just have fun, just blank it all out, just act like, you know, it's like riding a bike, you know, so. Jerry Lynn is like the, you know, the wrestling dad for us back there and, you know, he's always has like a way to make you laugh or make you just forget it, get your nerves, just mm -hmm. ready to go out and perform. So throughout this whole thing is just have fun, you know, I just always try to have fun and, and always have a smile and don't take it too, too seriously. You know? Yeah, and that's such a positive note yeah. to end on. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you have uh -huh. anything to plug, you can do it right now. Um, uh, if you guys want to follow me on uh, Instagram, Twitter is Sean Dean, S H A W N D E A N 773. Um, I have t shirts for sale on prowrestlingtees.com backslash Sean Dean. And yeah, you know, when you guys are out there in the crowd, you know, don't be afraid to say hit them with the deal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All the links are going to be in the description down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like if you had a good time. Subscribe, tap the notification bell to never miss an upload. And until next time, goodbye. See you guys later. Thank you.